Hello and welcome to this neat video tutorial on how to build a good noise profile. Now before I start I ought to say that the workflow I'm going to demonstrate even though I'm using Premiere Pro CS5 will be the same for any application that supports neat video. There might be minor differences in how you apply effects and bits and pieces like that but once you get into the neat video user interface the workflow is going to be pretty much the same regardless of what application you have. Now I'm in Premiere Pro, I've adjusted the user interface to better demonstrate things and I have one piece of footage, this sample piece of footage which is an extremely noisy clip and when I talk about a noise profile you can see up here in the clouds that there is an awful lot of grainy noise. Now this particular piece of footage was taken at night and I suspect that the camera gain was turned right up and as they turned up the camera gain they added an awful lot of noise into the clip so this is actually a particularly bad example which we're going to use to clean up the clip. Now you can see this noise so if we can show Neat Video what is the noise as opposed to any of the features that are in this particular shot Neat Video can mathematically analyze that noise and remove it from the whole of the shot. So the better the profile that we make the better job Neat Video will be able to do in removing the noise and producing a lovely clean result. Now in this particular project I have one piece of footage and I have two sequences, a progressive sequence and an interlace sequence. And this is to demonstrate how Neat Video will present information to you for progressive versus interlaced. OK, so we're in our progressive sequence, let's add Neat Video. So you need to go to your effects tab wherever that is and go down to your video effects and find a folder or find a category that's named Neat Video. And when you get to Neat Video, if you open up Neat Video, you'll find something that's called Reduce Noise. You apply that to the clip. So for Premiere Pro, that means clicking, holding, dragging, and dropping on the clip. And then you need to look at the effect. So in Premiere Pro, that's under the Effects Control. Click on Effects Control. And there is Reduce Noise at the bottom of all my automatically applied effects. OK, so open up Reduce Noise, and you'll see that you've got a number of bits and pieces. I'm just going to move this out so we can see it a bit better you can see that you've got a number of bits and pieces which are automatically applied and the temptation is to leap in and start altering these that's not going to make any difference to the clip what you need to look for is hot text or an option box or a setup box that you can click on to open up the neat video user interface and on Premiere Pro it's a setup box over here so you click on that and the neat video interface is launched so as you look at this you can see it fills the whole of the preview box and right at the bottom of the screen here it says this frame 960 by 540 so that's 960 wide by 540 lines tall and it's a 32-bit RGB clip okay so that's how it presents something from a progressive sequence what about from the interlace sequence let's cancel this out and go to our interlace sequence click on the tab for the interlace sequence I've already applied the neat video effect reduce noise there it is so I just click on the option box here and as we do we get a very different look and it says at the bottom down here, it says field 960, so it's exactly the same width, but 270 lines high, which is precisely half of the 540 that we saw in the progressive sequence. What's going on here? Well, Premiere Pro is going to present to you a full frame, regardless of whether it's interlaced or progressive. However, behind the scenes, or as they say, under the hood, Premiere Pro is dealing with this footage field by field. Now, a field for interlaced footage is precisely half of the number of lines. So it plays, say, the upper half first. So, for instance, for the first field, it will be 270 lines that are all an even number. And then for the second field, it might be 270 lines that are all the odd numbers. Or the other way around, depending on what type of footage it is. They deal with it in a different way. These are called fields, and sometimes you see them described as upper field first or lower field first. So under the hood... Premiere Pro is looking at this one field at a time and that's the information that it then sends out to any plugin that works in Premiere Pro. Neat Video is a plugin so Neat Video is only receiving 270 lines. These are either the even numbered lines or the odd numbered lines. This is what Neat Video is sent from Premiere Pro. It is not a mistake by Neat Video. It is not an aspect ratio problem. It is just exactly what Premiere Pro is sending out and you can still build a perfectly good profile from interlaced footage as you can from progressive footage. You can still build it with this smaller area. Don't think that this is a mistake, this isn't, and it's perfectly possible to get great results working with interlaced footage. 
I'm going to be using the progressive sequence simply because it's easier for you to see on the screen. So I'm going to cancel out of this and I'm going to go back to my progressive sequence and I'm going to open up the setup box. And there we have it. Right, now we need to build a profile. There are three ways that you can build a profile. You can have it completely automatic, you can have it semi-automatic, or you can have it semi-automatic with fine tuning. And I'm going to demonstrate all three, even though for this particular image I can probably get away with just the auto profile. I use it to demonstrate all three. Okay, auto profile. It's as simple as this. You've opened it up, you've got the auto profile button, click auto profile, and it selects a region that it thinks is pretty much feature free. In other words, pretty much all it can see is noise without any features. However, it doesn't always get it right. You need to be very careful to look. Don't just assume because the auto profile has been selected that it's got it right. It can make mistakes. Now an auto profile is always shown with this thick blue bar around it. As soon as you start to modify it, it will change to a different color. But at the moment, Neat Video is saying, hey look, on this frame, I think I've got an area which is mid-bright, so it's not too dark, it's not too light, it's mid-bright, and that's a key, always look for mid-bright areas, which is full of noise, that it can profile really well, and it thinks that the quality is going to be about 80%, which is excellent. Now, don't get hung up about the quality figure. Even if the quality figure is low, if you create a profile properly, you'll end up with good results. But at the moment, it's telling us it's really great. You don't, incidentally, have to click this Auto Fine Tune. It is automatically applied when you do Auto Profile. Auto Fine Tune is more linked to when you load a profile. When you're using Auto Profile, it will apply Auto Fine Tune afterwards. So, how do we know if it looks any good? We click on the Noise Filter settings, and it gives us a preview, and we can see, yep, that looks pretty good. You don't just have to go for the complete image. If you click once on the image, it goes back to the original. As you can see, it says original in the top right hand corner. Or alternatively, you can click and drag an area. It shows a filtered area which you can then move around and have a look. So that looks pretty okay. But what if it wasn't that good? What if it didn't do what we wanted it to do? So I'm actually going to click cancel and I'm going to go to another area. I'm going to go to about here. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to click auto profile and let's see how it looks. Auto Profile, again shown with this big blue line all the way around it, has said, I think this area is probably an area which has shown just noise and with no particular problems with luminosity, with the, with the brightness or with the colour channels, that this is going to give me a good result. Now, we need to analyse this shot and immediately we can see there is a problem. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in using my middle mouse wheel, which will zoom into the actual profile area and we'll see that we've got some bits and pieces in there that shouldn't be there and you can clearly see that there is a wire that's going straight through the middle of this profile area which is no good to us because this wire is a feature it may well be hidden because of all the noise and the gain of the camera but even so it's a feature and if I take a noise profile with a feature in it I'm going to have problems later on and now I'm going to zoom back out by scrolling my middle mouse wheel back so I get to full screen and I now know that I need to move this auto profile area because it is not suitable now I can just resize it and as I resize it it will change colour. Click and drag and it goes to green. Green is saying okay now you are manually selecting the area. However with this green you'll see that you've got a thick green area which is saying this is a great size nice and big. Thin which is saying it's okay. If I go even smaller it turns to yellow, thick yellow and then thin yellow and then eventually it'll go to red that says hey I can't get a profile from this. So you can adjust the size of this box and you want to get it as big as possible. Obviously with some pieces of footage it's never going to be possible to get really big areas but don't worry there's a way of dealing with that that I'll show you a bit later on. Okay so I think if we take this right into the corner here we can pull it down to just above the lamp post there and we've got a fairly good area. So now that I've got this in here, I need to click the Auto Profile button to apply it. As you say, it automatically builds a noise profile using the current video frame. So now that I have manually selected an area, click Auto Profile and it is applied. The selected area is small. Using a larger area may produce a more accurate noise profile. The recommended size is 128 by 128 or more pixels. You can stop and manually select a larger area or just continue building profile using the currently selected area. 
continue building the profile? Yes, we're going to continue because we're going to fine tune it in the next stage. So we click yes, and then we have a look at it in our noise filter settings. So let's have a little look down here. Let's draw an area. Does that look good? That's not bad, you know, but maybe we can do a bit better. And if we're going to do a bit better, then actually what we need to do, if you're happy at this point, click apply. If you're not happy at this point, then what we need to do is go from the standard mode to the advanced mode. So let's go back to our device noise profile. Let's click on the word tools. And at the moment it says standard mode and click advanced mode. And when you click advanced mode, you get this wonderful graph and the ability to fine tune the selection that we've made. Now, I want to explain this, and to do that, I'm going to change from the three channels. At the moment, we've got red, green, and blue, and just show individual channels. Let's click on red. Now, what do we have here? Where we have colored in squares, the same color as the line, that is telling me that a profile has already been made, that it's got something and it's confident of the data. Where it has a yellow dot, it tells me that it has not managed to find a noise profile for that particular luminance area. Now this at the bottom shows us it's going from the very darks to the very bright reds. So at the moment we know that we've got a fairly good noise profile for the darker reds, although not the darkest, and this is the noise levels at this side, but we've got very little for the brighter reds. So actually we need to find a different area to profile. How do we do that? We can look at the other ones, green and blue. Incidentally, when you have a bigger square, as we have it here in the blue, here in the green, and here in the red, this is representing the actual area you presently have selected. So I have this area selected, it's telling me that it is going to affect this area. So let's select a different area and see if it changes. Let's look at this darker area down here. Let's have a look at that and see what it does. Well, it tells us in the red channel that it's going to profile an area already done, so we don't need to do that again. Again, green, it's already done. Again, with blue, it's already done. So we're going to need to find a lighter area to be able to fill in these areas, particularly if we look at it on the red channel. So how do we do that? We don't have anything that looks particularly suitable here. Maybe this bumper, we could possibly take a profile there. Let's have a look. Well, look, on the red channel, we're definitely going to get an area uncovered. Green, again, an area that's not been covered. And blue, well, we'll cover something that's already been covered, but that's okay because we know for the red and green it's going to work. So let's look at the three channels. And then to actually add this to our noise profile, we need to click this button down here, which says Manual Fine Tune. Use to manually fine tune current noise profile using selected image area. So if we click on that, it starts to pull these areas down. Let's look at the individual channels. Now, can you start to see that there is actually a trend? that the red is beginning to go down and this one is actually on that trend. So we are pretty much in the right area. But we really don't have anything else in this frame that's going to give us anything new. So what do we do? We simply click apply 